Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to part two of building and detailing the AMT 148 scale B26 Marauder. In part two, we'll work on the interior, glue up the fuselage, attach the wings, and work on the engines. The Bombay bulkheads and framing were taped into place, and then I added tiny beads of superglue to the attachment points. I was also careful not to glue the assembly to the fuselage at this juncture. Next, I started working on the cockpit area by test fitting all the parts once again. I started making notes on the instructions on what details I wanted to add and what modifications to the parts would be needed. I made a box on the back side of the cockpit bulkhead to hold some of the weight that would be necessary to get the kit to sit correctly on its tricycle landing gear. I also super glued weight to the cockpit bulkhead areas that would not be seen once the cockpit was assembled and the fuselage halves were glued together. Notice how I cut and shaped the lead weights. There were surface imperfections on the interior walls of the cockpit and careful wet sanding removed them. There were also some imperfections on the outer surfaces of the fuselage around the cockpit area that also needed to be sanded smooth. I also checked the fit and location of the cockpit sidewall details. This also helped me identify areas along the fuselage surface where I could add additional lead weight. When I checked the fit of the cockpit canopy, I noticed a void on the left fuselage half. I filled it with a small length of plastic strip that I sanded and contoured into place while repeatedly checking the fit of the canopy. The additional lead weight has been glued into place and thanks to the fit checks their locations will not interfere with interior detail parts. I added all the lead weights to the cockpit area that I could insert into hidden locations and then I added the remaining weight to the inside areas of the engine nacelles. I secured them in place with white glue. The Bombay subassembly is now ready for painting and dry brushing to make the surface details stand out. The bomb racks had a lot of flash and indentations along the edges that needed to be sanded out. The cockpit instrument console and the engine control console had a surface detail sanded off so that the Edward pre-painted play cards would sit correctly. To get the engine control console play cards to sit correctly, I curved it around the smooth end of a drill bit. I matched the drill bit's diameter to the surface of the plastic part. I wanted to use some of the monogram kit's interior details, so I cut them out and then sanded the remaining plastic off by running the parts across a stationary piece of sandpaper. The kit's R2800 engines are not accurate, and I tried using the monogram engines, but they were too small because both the cowlings and the engine nacelles in the AMT kit are slightly larger. So my alternative was to scratch build some parts onto the existing kit engines. The first step in making the kit's engines look like R2800s was to remove the seams and the mold lines. Next, I carefully bent a length of brass wire around a wood dowel, the approximate diameter of the engine face, to make a wiring harness. The two curved brass wire rings were glued into place with super glue, and now it's time to add the engine wiring stubs. The wiring stubs were cut to length with my trusty Northwest Shortline Chopper. The ends were painted black with an indelible marker to make it easier to drill them out to accept the wiring. The engine on the left has its wiring added along with the piston rods. I also added magnetos from my spare parts box. Both engines are now complete, and while they're not accurate R2800 engines, their appearance is much improved, and they'll look pretty good once they're installed and covered by the engine cowlings. 
When I originally built this kit, 3D printed parts were not available. However, now Resin 2 Details has a 148 scale R2800 engine that fits perfectly inside of the AMT cowling. It includes both the wiring and the push rods, and all you have to do is detail paint it. I like airbrushing as many surface details as possible, so I do a lot of layered masking and painting. Once the olive drab color is applied to the canvas areas, they'll be covered with masking tape. Here, the molded on cockpit details are masked off as well as the molded on oxygen cylinder. I use small lengths of masking tape around the surface details in order to achieve this fine masking work. Note how sharp and clean the details are. After masking and before airbrushing, I run the tip of a sharp lead pencil around the surface details to ensure the masking tape is flat. This prevents paint from bleeding under the masking tape. The next step was to mask and paint the cockpit sidewall panel details and then add the Edward pre-painted play cards. All the interior parts have been painted and detailed. I picked out all the tiny details with paint by dipping the end of a sharp toothpick into the paint bottle cap to apply tiny amounts at a time. The cockpit has now been assembled and the Edward pre-painted seat and shoulder harness belts really help add an additional layer of accuracy and realism to the cockpit. Here you can see how the Edward pre-painted play cards stand out. I cleaned up the 50 caliber machine guns and carefully scraped off the mold lines. An alternative for the kit supplied 50 caliber machine guns is the two-part master's brass barrels which I highly recommend. Before attaching the bomb bay assembly, I drilled holes through the fuselage so that after I attached the wings I could slide and glue thick plastic rod into place to add strength to the fuselage wing attachment points. The aft area was dry brushed with silver paint. Edward pre-painted ammo belts were added in areas where they could be seen and the remaining bulkheads and details were glued into place. All the interior details have now been added and the fuselage halves are almost ready to be glued together. To add strength to the upper fuselage seam, I added some lengths of plastic strip. This added strength will help ensure the seam won't crack because of all the added weight. The fuselage halves have been taped and glued together with super glue applied along the seam lines. Once the glue dried, I removed the tape and finished the gluing. Several applications were necessary to fill the seam areas. The seam lines along the fuselage were then carefully scraped and sanded smooth, checked for flaws, and the process repeated. To add more gluing surface area to the wing attachment points on the fuselage, I added 0.02 inch thick strips to the inside areas. This thickness made them level with the gluing attachment area along the edge. The wings should come out straight from the fuselage with almost no noticeable dihedral angle associated between the wings and the fuselage. Setting the wings correctly creates a void on the upper part of the attachment point between the wings and the fuselage. I filled this with various thicknesses of strips of plastic which were super glued into place. With the fuselage seam complete and the plastic strips trimmed down, now it's time to start sanding. Careful wet sanding and additional applications of super glue after checking the seams with silver paint took time to complete, but it was well worth it as the wings and the fuselage attachments were very strong. Next, I inserted the thick plastic rods into place, trimmed them down, and then painted them the interior color with a hand brush. The elevator assembly sat at a slight angle, so I added some shims to the gluing surface to level it. I positioned the clear part with a toothpick which had a small piece of masking tape on its tip. Once the clear part was positioned, I secured it with some white glue. All the clear parts received a coat of future floor finish. 
there was a void on the front area of the attachment point between the elevator and the fuselage which needed to be filled. I filled the void with several applications of white glue. I applied the glue with a small diameter wire and the final application was contoured with a damp Q-tip. I then primed the dried glue. The rudder was glued into place and the voids between the fuselage and the bottom half of the rudder were filled with white glue, contoured with a Q-tip, and then primed. The completed assembly is now ready for masking and a final coat of primer. The landing gear parts were primed, and then the mold lines were carefully scraped off. I positioned the landing gear inside the engine nacelles, taped the parts together, and then added tiny drops of superglue to secure everything together. I also noticed that the forward legs were too long for the locator pins inside the nacelles. On the starboard landing gear, I cut out a small section from each leg and spliced them back together so they would sit correctly inside the locator holes. I didn't like the way the starboard splice job looked, so I decided to glue the legs in place and cover the locator holes with small discs punch out with my handy water and punch tool. The brake lines were made from black stretched sprue and the brake line clamps were tiny strips of masking tape. The interior areas of the landing gear doors had imperfections that I carefully wet sanded using a small length of sandpaper wrapped around a length of balsa wood. The small opening on the inside of the forward landing gear bay was covered with a length of plastic and then brush painted. Stay tuned for part 3 of our three part series where we paint the exterior, add the decals and do some mild weathering. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and check out all the tutorials we have on the Scale Modeling channel. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music and happy scale modeling!